Welcome back. Uh, uh, in today's lecture, uh, we are going to just talk about uh, basic properties, phase diagram and thermodynamic uh, tables. Uh, this is just to make sure that uh, those who have not gone through the earlier engineering thermodynamics course uh, can get an exposure to fundamental aspects of uh, the properties and how to extract uh, those from the tables for solving problems. So these are the learning objectives. We will be talking about the basic phase diagrams saturated liquid and vapor states, what are those on the phase diagrams, similarly what are the superheated vapor and compressed subcooled liquid uh, states and eventually for the case of the water and the refrigerant and some simple systems or simple fluids, we will be uh, also demonstrating what are the typical property tables. In case of a saturated system, the quality is another term which we are going to show how to use that. So, uh, we are all aware of the phases of pure substances. Uh, we know that uh, pure substance can form different phases, uh, but the common ones are solid, uh, liquid and gas, which are uh, basically uh, differentiated based on the density of the system. Uh, so, for example, that would be your uh, water, uh, which you can easily see. Now, the molecules those interact uh, very closely as in the lattice uh, structure tends to attain uh, the solid structure such as this. Now if you increase the temperature for example, uh, it will start melting at certain temperature and you may get uh, the particles which are moving in random directions uh, which would be the phase called liquid and if you further expand it or further increase the temperature and uh, leading to expansion let us say in the volume and leading to decrease in the density, you may get a gas phase. Now you may think that the interactions are effectively reducing as you change the phases, which is true. However, the type of interactions remain the same, it is just effective interactions uh, reduces as they are far apart. At a certain point, uh, they will be so far apart from each other that they will not have any effect leading to something called ideal gas scenario. Okay. So this is a typical structure of uh, the different kind of phases. Now. Uh, the change of the phases are described on a diagram which we call it a phase diagram. Uh, now these are usually uh, demonstrated in uh, intensing 2D uh, kind of a plot. Example would be something like temperature uh, against a specific volume. This is something like volume divided by mass. Now this is just for the sake of illustration. So this is an example for uh, the TV diagram of water where what we are doing is we are heating water at a constant pressure. So to illustrate this example, you can consider that you have a massless piston here, right? This is the massless piston and essentially the heat is being provided and the pressure outside is one atmosphere which always remains the same and initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius at which the liquid we call it compressed liquid, okay? Now we will come to that definition of the compressed liquid later. But what happens that uh, subsequently once you put more uh, heat to the system, eventually it follows this line which is a green line at a certain temperature, well, of course the temperature increases at a certain temperature which we all know is 100 degrees Celsius. The first bubble of uh, vapor starts coming in and eventually now it follows this horizontal line which essentially means that at certain point here you have a state something like this where you have a saturated vapor in equilibrium with saturated liquid. Okay. And the vaporization of the liquids keeps happening until you reach this point where the last drop of liquid vaporizes and subsequently what you have is nothing but all gas but in a in, a, in something called superheated state. So at this point at 4 you have a state which is a completely vapor but it is saturated this would be your saturated vapor okay and this would be your saturated liquid okay so this kind of uh, plot or the diagram is usually also called uh, the phase diagram but essentially what you are doing is you are looking at the process here along a certain conditions so you can fill this uh, tv plot at a different conditions or different pressures for example and if you do that essentially what you are going to get for example we had uh, this scenario earlier okay uh, which is nothing but the same 0.1 megapascal and now if you do it 
the similar kind of uh, operation, you're going to get different pressure-based curve, okay, uh, which are nothing but isobars. And at a certain point, what you're going to see is that a uh, very interesting here is this uh, this inflection point where there is no horizontal line, which is the region of phase transitions. Okay. So this phase transition, if you look at very carefully, the length of this, okay, decreases at a certain point, it becomes just a point, and this is where the both the saturated liquid and vapor coexist, and this we call it critical point. For the case of water, the critical point is 373.95 degrees Celsius and the critical pressure, this is the pressure here is 22.06 megapascal. Okay. Now, we can also summarize this in a simple curve here, uh, which is now basically ad addressing the uh, same thing. So, what we are trying to emphasize again here that this is the TCR and this is the corresponding specific volume or the molar volume is going to be VCR, which CR stands for critical point here. And anything beyond that is the supercritical region where the pressure is greater than PCR at this point. Okay. So, uh, at supercritical pressures that is P greater than PCR, there is no distinct phase change. That means, the boiling does not occur at pressure greater than PCR. Okay. So, again to summarize here, the critical point is the point at which the saturation liquid and vapor states are identical. So, now uh, if you try to connect this uh, isobars here. Okay, so, this is what this is a pressure constant pressure lines. If you try to connect the point which corresponds to saturated the vapor and the liquid. So, remember that this region we are saying this compressed liquid, this the points we are talking, we are saying that these are saturated liquid and this is going to be saturated vapor. So, if you connect this line, these dots here, the point of phase transition, so you get a curve here and this curve is called saturated liquid line that is what it is written here saturated liquid line and similarly this one is saturated vapor line and it connects to the critical point so you, what you get is now the truly the tv diagram earlier you had only the lines here okay which are the iso bars but now you have the complete phase diagram now in between you have saturated vapor liquid region here left side is compressed liquid region the right side is superheated vapor region. Okay. So, this is a, a typical TV diagram of a pure substance. Now, similarly, you can have a pressure uh, volume diagram, okay, which is written here P and V. Remember that these are all intensive variable. In this case also, the left hand side is compressed liquid region, left uh, this is saturated line and saturated vapor line. So, what we are doing in this case of PV diagram is we are getting an isothermal lines here, okay, which is nothing but essentially at a given temperature, temperature less than the critical point. If you start from the compressed region here and if you reduce the pressure, you follow this line here for example, okay. And you can consider this from this perspective here that uh, you are maintaining the temperature here for example and you are trying to reduce the pressure that means you have weight on the piston and if you allow this uh, weight to reduce here in such a manner that this follows very slowly, the process is extremely slow, uh, then basically there will be expansion in this. So, essentially when you remove this, the, the piston is going to move up a little bit and that means it follow this line. At a certain point, when you have a specific uh, pressure on the system, it is going to phase change okay? and then subsequently follow the superheated region. So, this is the ISO uh, thermal lines, you know, similar to the TV diagram in the PV diagram, you connect these two points, points corresponding to saturated liquid and saturated vapor and then when you connect, you get a curve and leading to the critical point here. Okay. So, this is a typical PV diagram for the pure substance. Now, uh, we talked about only 2D plots, but uh, you have uh, the pressure, you have the volume, you have the temperature. So, PVT is a normal uh, state variables which essentially you can uh, club three together and you can get this 3D diagrams where you can have this solid vapor phase transition, you can have a solid liquid regions, you can have only solid, you can have vapor and it is usually very difficult to remember to draw, but it is uh, illustrative that what we are doing is uh, what we are taking the projections of the systems which is a 3D here to 2D here and you can get this PET diagram as we have said there. You can have this uh, PV diagram which is this one. So, this is what we have shown the last uh, slide. So, what you are getting is uh, basically isothermal 
lines here, all right? But this is in the saturated uh, liquid vapor region. So you can also have solid uh, vapor region in the same way. And if you add it all together, if you put it all together on one plot, you're going to get this very complicated plots here. Simplified version is uh, pressure and temperature plots, where essentially you have uh, three specific lines for the pure substance. One is uh, your uh, saturated vapor line, which uh, on a PT diagram, it will look like a simple curve. That means each point here represent something like this, where you have vapor and you have liquid. So essentially this point corresponds to the case where you have this, if you clearly see, this is the vapor, uh, liquid vapor region. So if you take it and take a projection on this side, you're going to get just one point here. So for example, in this case, uh, this one corresponds to, let's say this, you, you can consider this to be this two phase region. Uh, similarly, this single point corresponds to the triple line, which you say that, okay. So uh, the triple uh, line on this uh, PT uh, temperature would be a simple triple point. This is the point where basically three phases coexist. So again, uh, let me go back here. And this is uh, what we I was talking about is a saturated vapor line. Then you have this uh, solid liquid uh, fusion line. And then you have the solid vapor, which we often is called sublimation line, okay. Now, what you notice is that, that depending on the substance which can contract or expand upon freezing, you will have this uh, slope this of this uh, fusion line to be positive or negative. So as I said that in a PT diagram here, so here I was already mentioned, so this is the one which is a negative, this is the substances that expand on freezing, example would be water. Now, I assume that most of the people have seen these things, so hence I am not uh, trying to uh, get into more details at this point. We will discuss this more later when we make use of uh, free energy calculations uh, to explain all those, these aspects. So let me also further summarize this uh, from the point of view of uh, phase transition. This is again pressure and temperature for the pure substance. So this is your sublimation line, that means essentially this solid and a vapor coexist, which essentially means that uh, let's say if your system is in a solid, it directly goes to the vapor case. Now this would be the case uh, which uh, essentially you see in a, a dry ice, a CO2 at room temperature immediately from solid uh, CO2, it goes to the vapor. This is the triple point. This is uh, essentially you have a, a solid here. If you heat it up at certain point here, you will have three phases in coexistence, something like this, okay and then it immediately goes to the vapor phase. Uh, this is a fusion line where basically if you go from E to F, imagine that you first have a solid followed by liquid followed by vapor. On the other hand, if you consider let us say here A to B, it is like solid to vapor, here solid and then coexistence followed by vapor, okay. So there is no specific conversion to the transformation to the liquid completely, okay. So it gives you an idea of the phase transitions if you have this phase diagrams clearly, okay. For example, let me also complete with this statement here that G to H, if there is a transfer process leading to this, then essentially there is no phase transition in this case. So you have this phase transition, it occurs upon some changes in the state variables. So you, or some changes, uh, just like we said, we changing the temperature or pressure, you see this phase transition to occur. In order to change this uh, temperature and pressure or other state variables, you have to apply certain uh, external or certain uh, uh, heat or work you have to conduct uh, uh, on the systems. Or So what we define as far as the heat associated with the phase transition is called usually the latent heat. So for the case of uh, fusion processes, the latent heat of fusion would be the amount of energy absorbed or released during that phase transition. Similarly, you will have latent heat of vaporization, that is the heat associated with the vaporization and similarly that for uh, sublimations, okay. So the magnitude of the latent heat depends on the temperature and pressure at which the phase transition or phase change occurs. So consider this example where you have the pressure which is one atmosphere, the latent heat of fusion of water is 333.7 kilojoules per kg, okay, but the corresponding pressure, the latent heat of vaporization is much, much higher, okay. Now there is a variation of uh, also the boiling temperature. So if you look at again the phase diagram, you will notice that as you change the pressure, the lines are saturated or isobars shifts up. 
So essentially what is happening that uh, the corresponding boiling temperature also changes. So uh, something called standard boiling temperature or something called or the normal uh, boiling temperature or something called the saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure. So uh, that do change. So if you look at the example here, the variation of the standard atmospheric pressure and the boiling temperature of water. So this would also give an example of why it takes uh, longer time to, to cook uh, at a higher altitude. So you take an example of this at a zero elevation corresponding with respect to the sea level. At a normal uh, pressure, the boiling temperature we know is basically 100 degrees Celsius. But as you go higher, let's say 1000 meter, the boiling temperature is much lower. Okay. So essentially uh, much of energy is vaporized or, and hence uh, you are losing the energy at higher elevation okay, uh, which is basically the latent vaporization takes away and thus you need uh, more time for cooking because your uh, liquid is vaporizing much earlier. Okay. So this gives you an idea about the process much more effectively and hence uh, you can think how to correct if you need to do any modification in the process. Okay. Now as I already mentioned that all these phase diagrams and the corresponding changes in the properties uh, in a, for a process uh, is, is uh, something which you can uh, solve uh, by making use of uh, something called property. So essentially a property table. So this becomes very useful and usually you will notice that all the thermodynamic uh, textbook will have this kind of thing or NIST web of science also has uh, such, uh, such tables. So property table is nothing but uh, tabulating informations. Uh, of the property of the pure substances such as your internal energy, your uh, enthalpy, entropy and so forth uh, for a given temperature or pressure. Now usually you will see that you will have this U plus PV term uh, which we uh, call enthalpy. We have not introduced yet but uh, for the sake of property table illustration I am just uh, mentioning this here. So this is a combinatory uh, property which is very useful for flow system. Okay, so usual property table would be something called uh, saturation properties under temperature. We will be using the water in a, as an example and the other would be saturated property of water under pressure. So this is an example of that. This is a saturated water temperature table which essentially means that uh, what we are looking at is for each temperature there is a corresponding uh, saturation pressure and then you have this two phase system. So saturation liquid uh, specific volume is given here, saturated uh, vapor specific volume is given similarly for the internal energy and then this UFG is nothing but the difference between UG and UF, okay, that is UFG and then you have this enthalpy and the entropy. So this is only for the water, there are other fluids which are also used but not many because it is, it is something which is a tremendous uh, time consuming operation here. And since water is used in the steams and turbines and so forth, it becomes very valuable to have a table. Uh, similarly for refrigerant you will have it, uh, but uh, uh, that is about it, uh, not much uh, particularly in the usual test book. If you want more uh, information about properties, then essentially the web of NIST web of uh, chemistry becomes a valuable resource for you to consider. So this is again the saturation water, but now what we are doing is we are changing the pressure here. So if you look at for a given pressure, the corresponding saturation temperature okay, and then the similar thing that saturation liquid uh, molar volume, saturated vapor molar volume, then you have internal energy and for the fluid, for the gas and then the difference between the fluid and gas. Similarly for enthalpy which is U plus PV for the fluid, that is liquid for uh, vapor and then the difference between that. Okay. Let us look at uh, if you have a saturated vapor liquid system then how do you define the amount of vapor present? in a given system. So we often use term called quality. So quality is nothing but the ratio of the mass of the vapor to the total mass of the mixture. So this is what the definition of the quality is. Okay. And this becomes very valuable in various different calculations and I am going to show some example with that. So if effectively what I am trying to say is that if you have a system such as saturation vapor and saturation liquid then you can consider this equivalently having a homogeneous system with a specific volume of V average. So if you want to have this kind of representation then you need to use uh, something called by definition because you already have uh, the definition of X. So V average would be simply the molar volume of liquid plus the quality multiplied by VFG which is nothing but VG minus VF. Okay. That is why you get this kind of expression. Okay. Similarly you can do for internal energy, similarly you can do for enthalpy. You can also understand the quality from a 
graphical approach where if you have this phase diagram given to you and then the point you've been asked to find out the quality then quality would be simply let's say if you have point here this is the system in which you are talking about the vapor and liquid and you've been asked to find out the quality that means the ratio of mass of volume divided by total mass then you can consider this uh, simple uh, length okay with respect to the volume here so this will be a b a and b okay divided by the total length here that means essentially you can use the graphical approach also if you have the data and if you can plot it also but if you have the numerical values you can clearly use that uh, the other thing is that if you see this data as the specific volume of the gas is going to be much much larger than the specific volume of uh, fluid hence any point here the volume is will, will be in between these two points so now let us uh, do an example so this is an example of a rigid tank containing 10 kg of water at 90 degrees Celsius. If 8 kg of water is in the liquid form and the rest in the vapor form, we have to determine the pressure of the tank and the volume of the tank. Okay. So what we do is that uh, we have been given this uh, 90 degrees Celsius and essentially it is being told to us that this is a system which is in saturated condition. So we look at first the saturation table, the property table, but the temperature one. So I extract that and essentially we, what I have the data here, this is the temperature and the corresponding to 90 degrees Celsius, uh, we have saturation pressure and the molar volumes, I got it here. Okay. So this corresponds to this kind of a situation where you have 90 degree and this is the isobar and this is the pressure and somewhere here the system is with these conditions 90 degree Celsius, uh, the gas is, uh, the vapor mass is 2 kg and the liquid uh, mass is 8 kg. So I need to find out the pressure in the tank, pressure is of course corresponds to directly this which is saturation pressure because it is a two phase system that is the vapor and liquid uh, are in coexistence and the volume of the tank will be simply the total volume of the fluid plus total volume of the gas which will be mass of the fluid multiplied by the specific uh, volume of the liquid plus the mass of the gas or the vapor multiplied by specific uh, volume of the fluid. So this we know, Ms F and Mg we know, uh, Vf and Vg we know from the table and then we can plug it in. So this is one approach, so this is a approach, uh, one approach basically. Okay. The other approach is since we know that definition of x is nothing but the mg by m total, total, so this is what we are doing here, so 2 kg divided by 10 kg which is 0.2. Now given this, we can find out the v of the system, specific uh, volume of the system, complete system which will be nothing but vf plus x times vfg. Now vf comes from directly from the table x we have calculated 0.2 and vfg is nothing but vg minus vf which again we can make use of the table and then from there we can get the same information. So this is but this is nothing but this is your specific volume so with this we have to multiply by total mass then this is what is being done here this will give us the total volume of the system. Okay. So both the approaches are the same and gives you the same answers as well. Now. Uh, Similarly, you can do another example, but now in this case you can consider a refrigerant. So without solving this, uh, I am just going to just read out here. So for example, if you consider an 80 litre vessel contains a 4 kg of refrigerant 134A at a pressure of 160 Kelvin, determine the temperature quality enthalpy of the refrigerant and the volume occupied by the vapor liquid. So essentially what is given is total uh, volume, you can convert this to into meter cube is we have been given the mass that means you do have the total specific volume and you are being given that at pressure. So essentially you are going to take the pressure saturation uh, table of the specific refrigerant 134 from there you will find out what is the corresponding temperature at, that means the saturation temperature that will give us this. Making use of the fact that V you know which is a specific volume, this is going to be Vf plus X Vfg. So that means X is V minus Vfg divided by Vf. So you know this because you can convert 80 liter into meter cube and then you can divide by 4 kg, you have this information, this comes from the tables and this comes from the table, so you know the X here. Once you know the X, H is going to be your Hf plus X Hfg. Okay. Now from here you also know, so 
so this you can calculate for this one for the volume you know that uh, particularly the volume occupied by the vapor phase you know the x is nothing but m g by m total okay x you have calculated from here m total you know is 4 kg so this gives you mg okay v g is nothing but capital v g this is small v g which is a specific volume divided by m g so from here you can get your v g okay because this from the table okay so this is how you are going to make use of the table to obtain information such as quality enthalpy the volume occupied by the vapor phase okay so that is another example which you can do at home okay so last uh, few uh, minutes I am going to just uh, quickly wrap up the other uh, cases uh, which is uh, the case of superheated vapor uh, which is the, on the right hand side so in this region which is uh, usually the temperature of the critical point of, uh, this is going to be superheated vapor okay and usually the temperature and pressure or uh, in this region temperature pressure are independent properties you need uh, two intensive uh, variables to define the state here okay so uh, for this case also uh, you have a uh, specific tables the tables are given in this case uh, v u h is there is no saturation conditions here hence you will have only the specific volume internal energy and enthalpy so note that this is the case of uh, superheated uh, vapor you have this h which is greater than the enthalpy of the gas so similar to that we will also talk about the compressed liquid compressed liquid is on the left hand side of the diagram so this is example of t and internal energy it could be volume also so here you see note very carefully that uh, these are the conditions where the temperature let us say is here okay this temperature is less than the corresponding temperature at which this isobar is being sketched so this isobar has this uh, so this would be your t uh, sat at 5 mega pascal okay so this is isobar for which your saturation temperature is something t here this t is certainly more than this let us say 80 degree celsius which is being the point of interest for us in this case okay so this state 80 degree celsius 5 mega pascal would be your compressed liquid but the property would be that the t sat corresponding to p is going to be more than the temperature okay so that is the that means the compressed liquid is usually at lower temperature than the saturation temperature of a given pressure at a given pressure similarly it is at higher pressure p is much greater than p sat at a given temperature okay so that also you can show so uh, usually the properties of compressed liquid would be that your volume is less than uh, fluid volume at a given p or t u is less than uf h is less than hf okay so that is the property of the compressed liquid considering that uh, we do a lot of approximation one of the common approximation is that we try to approximate the property let us say y which could be volume internal energy or enthalpy as a prop, uh, value of uh, y a fluid at a given that a particular temperature a more accurate relation let us say for particularly for uh, enthalpy is going to be the hs hft uh, plus the volume of the fluid at uh, t multiplied by the difference of the pressure with respect to the p sat value but this is the approximation we commonly use okay so the last uh, slide which i am going to cover in this lecture is about reference state remember that uh, we cannot uh, calculate the absolute value of uh, the entropy enthalpy basically the free energy we cannot so we always take the reference uh, we always calculate the difference between the uh, 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 the, the, the value with respect to certain reference so usually the reference becomes an important we often choose a reference state for water is in terms of temperature is 0 0.01 degree and for the refrigerant is minus 40 degrees celsius okay so it's important that when you look at the table you look at what also the reference is being considered okay so i'm sure that you have looked into uh, you have gone through this particular kind of uh, exercises earlier uh, the, what i wanted in this lecture was to quickly recap the phase diagram and other uh, thermodynamic properties um, so at this point i'm going to stop and uh, we'll continue in the next lecture thank you